it in the hood with it. Welcome back to the collective clips where you already know we get it in. But before we get it in, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Ding! Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directed in the direction of the dope content I am kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support, man. Thank you. We're going up on this channel and I appreciate every bit of it, man. I'm very humbled. And first and foremost, gracias, man. Thank you. I couldn't do it without you. Look it. On the north side, this is my fucking cousin got me all flamed up. If you're going to do a video about me, primo, you got to get flamed up. Porque that's just how... Because I'm over here breaking the Mongolian watching your bullshit. So fucking do, do it to it. Live vicariously through me. No, that's you living vicariously through it. However, I don't want to live in another man. I'm active, right? Well, look. Trip out, man. Let's get to part eight. Ain't it great, right? Super Norteño part eight. It's a bird. It's a plane. It was my primo, man. He's faster than a speeding bullet. Give him a 22. He'll pull it, right? Straight up. My primo is crazy. And in this episode, man, we're going to talk about a situation he found himself in with a black guy, right? Oh, shit. Hey, a black guy, my primo, now we know we're in trouble, right? He had a friend, a neighbor, lived about a mile away, but they got close until they got too close, and then they weren't close no more, right? And I had to go say, hey, here I come to save the day. I had to get my mighty mouse on and go over there and save the day because it was about to be a tricky situation, especially when my tia got involved. So this is how it goes. So I pull up on my primo as usual, man. More than ever, it's just kickback time. You know, I know I tell these stories about we're going on these adventures and shit happens. But it's pretty much boring pulling up to his pad. There really ain't much going on. But because he lives on the outskirts in the country, man, we like to do things like go fishing, chasing coyotes, maybe the occasional tipping a cow. Yes, yeah, we did that. So what, right? Fun medals forever, right? So we'd be doing shit like that. So he calls me over, hey, Primo, what are you doing? We're about to barbecue with my neighbor. Neighbor? Now, up until this point, I never knew they had a neighbor. I knew there was houses like miles away, but you got to understand, they live in the middle of fucking nothing and zero, right? So I'm like, neighbor, whopping, right? Let me come through. So I slid over there, man, and I had just got a brand new Honda Accord, and I thought I was the shit on Roadsters, too. I don't know if you guys remember Roadsters. They popped out a little bit. So there was no fucking, absolutely no way Sheila was going to ride in that car because we would have been like this the whole way. <laughs> scraping. She would have been scraping my tires. So I was like, hey, Primo, if we have to go get ice or whatever for the barbecue, Sheila can't come. Why not, bro? She'll ride in the front with us. Nah, because see, the way my suspension works is it can only hold 280. And I know she's not that type of lady. She's at least 300 for a little fun, though. So we're not going to go that route. So he's like, okay, just come through, bro. And I want you to meet my homeboy. He's cool. I'm saying... This guy got a homeboy? Since when did you start having homeboys, right? So I pull up and it smells bomb. They're barbecuing all up in the front yard. You know, one of those front yards, two broken fucking motorcycles, a beat up ass fucking lawn, uh, lawnmower machine that never gets used. I don't know how they fucking, how that ended up fucked up because the lawn is this high. You literally have to push through it. Um, it's the Congo out there. So I pull up and it smells bomb and there's a big fat brother, right? And he's cooking. He got overalls. I'm not exaggerating. Real overalls on. Dirty ass body. He's blowing his nose with. Every time he does it, my primo looks like it's sacrilegious. Like, you're not there. Here's a blue one, right? And so I pull up and my primo introduces me to him. His name is Melvin. So they, we, I call him Melly Mel. What's up, Melly Mel, right? So I pull up and he's like, hey, how you doing, right? Hey, I'm the neighbor from down yonder country as a motherfucker. Now, this dude had moved from the south. Not Southern California from the deep south, like Alabama, Mississippi, somewhere like that. Um, and he had moved in with his family. And he was a few years older than my primo. But I guess because they were in the same vicinity, somewhere along the line of my cousin riding his fucking beach cruiser up and down the street, they happened to hit it off and become friends. So this dude's over there barbecuing. So I'm out there chilling, man. He's getting down on the grill, right? Where they got enough food stamps to afford this, I can't call it. But it's going down. The brother done brought some meat over. My cousin contributed how, I don't know, and it's going down. And Sheila's out there in the shortest shorts possible, going on big fucking leg, look like a satellite, with hella ruffles going on right here, trying to fucking show her ass to the black guy. She has no ass, but she keeps showing, and I ain't gonna lie, I caught that brother a few times, taking a little sneak peek at what could possibly be, right? But of course, who has to come out and wreck everything? My tia. Mijo, have you met the neighbor? I have, right? I'm like, yeah, I met him. Hey, yeah, he's cool. What's up? Uh... So what's going on here? She was like, no, I'm going to make some arroz. Come inside so I can tell you about what I'm going to make. 
you can help me make the chile, right? So I go in with my tia, my primo's out there, and I say, who, who's this blank dude he's kicking the window? Can we trust him? Is he gonna steal anything? Mijo, look fucking around. Everything in here is stolen. They wanna steal it back, let him. It's broke anyways, right? So my tia's like, I don't know. He's just brought, he, you know my fucking son brings strays homes. He brought fat bitch home and she ain't left yet. Fucking football team, he brings, now he brought a big fat black dude, but I ain't gonna lie, the way his shit moves left when he walks right, it reminds me of lefty gunplay, right? So I'm like, oh shit. So my tia's getting at me like, hey, help me make the chili. So I'm helping her inside, whatever. She looks fat ass is sitting there trying to look at the black dude's balls. And everyone's living, having a great day. Kids are running around. We haven't even got to the children yet. There's at times when I feel I should call not only the CPS, but the Wild Refugee Fund because we need some type of donation to help them uh, get pampers. I swear there's always a kid that doesn't have shit on, just butt naked running around there like that movie Mi Familia, right? Hey, what's up? I'm an Aztec warrior. They be running around that camp. So anyways, I help my tia and my tia, hey, mijo, take this outside and put it right there on the table because I'm about to get ready. I got to get nice and ready because we have guests, right? We only have one black dude. And I already know what time it is with my tia. There was a point in time when my tia was stuck on black guys. And that old saying, once you go black, you'll never come back. That's a lie. Because I'm going to tell you right now, she went black, brown, white, yellow. She even had a little Asian dude that she used to give piggyback rights to. I'm telling you right now, my tia is all for one and one for all. Um, she's rainbow flagged up the, out the game. There was times that there was hyenas over there. She likes to get a pussy ate by everything, right? So my tia's in there taking a shower um, or a bath because they're shower head. And you can hear splashing. She sounds like a whale in there. So I'm out there kicking it with Sheila talking because I'm not going to lie. I don't know this black dude. I'm kind of, it's kind of odd that he's kicking it with my prima. My prima's all happy slapping him on the back. That's right, fool. Hey, chip out and Folsom. We didn't go. Uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we got along with the black dude. We were cool as shit. Yeah, that's right. And the black dude's like, I don't know what you're saying. I'm trying to fuck your old lady. Right? And they're just talking. And my tia comes out all glamored up. Right? Meaning she has some fucking dirty ass stretch pants with a few holes in them. And a knit top, right? You can literally see nipples poking out about this much, like a certain YouTuber's, right? So when she comes out, I'm like, oh, shit. Look at that all hooked up. Let's get hair done and shit. She's like, mijo, get my fan. The one, what do you think I am, Bentley? Then you ain't Diddy. I'm not going to fucking put an umbrella over your head and blow on you. So she's sitting down. It's fucking hot out here. I hate living out here. There's no trees. There ain't shit. But it smells like shit, right? She's looking right at fucking Sheila. So she does over there mesmerized with Pipa. My tia's over there mesmerized with Pipa. The two fat bitches are having it their way, right? So I go kick it. I'm chopping up with dude. Dude's from the South, like I said. He's a cool dude. And he's like, we should go fishing later on. So I'm like, shit, I'm all for that, bro. I, I stay with my fishing equipment in the trunk, right? Besides the woofers. What's happening with it? So we eat. Everything's good. Black dude takes off home. And he has a little beat up truck. He takes off home. He's like, I'm going to go get my fishing shit. I'll come back. I was like, hey, I can't take my fucking car out there because see the way my rims work, they're too nice for these dirt roads. And my cousin, he has no say so because unless he's going to get fucking ride his bike there, that's about all he's got. So the black dude's like, no, nah, you guys can jump in the back of the truck. We'll ride out. There's a couple little paths up here. I know a little cool spot. So I'm like, mira, este pinche negro does everything right. It's, got, it's on. So we go out there. We fish. Solid dude. Cool dude, man. We're telling the more stories. We're having a good time. I like him. So the next few times I do go over there, and you got to understand, it's not like I'm over there every fucking day. It's maybe one month, and then a month passes, or a couple weeks, whatever. Whenever my primo calls me out there, I feel like I'm fucking bored enough, and my life is, I'm depressed. Then I'll go out there to be to see that other people have it worse than I do, and it cheers me up, right? So I go out there one time, and I'm not going to lie, the door is locked. Their door, they I never even knew they had a door, to be totally honest with you. Usually that motherfucker's so wide open, it doesn't even look like they have a door. And the screen is still the same old screen. My cousin just take that motherfucker on that the paisa ran through, right? Or that the big black dude ran through. Or it was the little paisa Felipe. So anyways, I fucking... No one's home. They don't have a car, right? How, how do they go? They all jumped on my cousin's bike and popped willies. And my tia's like, who is it? I said, tia, it's me. Come back. He's not here. I said, where the fuck is he? She said, I don't know. One of his homeboys came and picked him up in a lowrider. And them fucker, I'm glad. Because I, I was at the point, right, with Brenda, I, I, with uh, fucking uh, uh, Barbara, with the fucking whatever her name is. Sheila, that bitch. I was at the point where I was going to grab her by her hair and throw her somewhere. So they left. They took their fucking kids with them. And hopefully they don't come back. I'm not wishing death upon them. But I see death around the corner like a Tupac son. I'm like, hey, just let me come in. I need to take a piss. 
What's the difference of taking a piss in my front yard and in my house? It's the same shit. It smells the same. Thea, and for some reason, she don't want to open this door, right? And then I look. And when I look, I see a little beat up truck parked in the cuts. Like, okay, this is the way it is for the house. It's a shack, right? It's a fucked up ass house. It's like, like I said, it's hanging on, barely holding on like in vogue. And then there's a few almond trees, but they're on the side. So they provide no shade. They don't even grow leaves or almonds. They're just there. They've been dead for a long time. They just need knocked down, right? Then there's a barbed wire fence on the other side. Well, this fucking black dude is parked in the cuts past the barbed wire fences. So when I see it, I'm like, oh, Melly Mel's here. So I'm like, hey, Thea, did he jam with Melvin or what's going on? Who's Melvin? Right? And then I hear somebody. And I'm like, this chick is in here getting her whole asshole way. Right? So I said, hey, Thea, I need to take a leak castle because now I'm curious. I want to see exactly what's going on. Right? So Melvin opens the door. Hey, what's happening, bro? And I'm like, what's good? And he goes, oh, your Thea ain't told you? And I said, nah. He said, shit. We done been together for a few weeks now. And my tia's like, I had to move on because my last boyfriend wasn't doing, he wasn't hitting it right. Melvin knows exactly what Miko, he knows what he's doing. I always remembered how black guys did it, but I just never thought or thought that they could get down at like a slam dunk, right? I'm like, oh, fuck. My tia is literally sitting on the couch with not a lot on, with a hole not a lot on, right? And the funny thing is her nails are done. Her hair is permed. She looks real Janet Jackson-ish, right? She's like, like control, she's different. So I look at my fan, I'm like, uh, it's like she's turning black right before my eyes. I don't know how, if I could say that, that's politically correct, but do you understand the type of thing where all of a sudden she went from Mexicana to getting weave in her hair, right? So her shit sewn in for real though. And I'm like, uh, what's going on here? And he's like, man, hey, there's food and shit, nephew. If I, well, well, hold up, fuck you mean nephew, right? We got an issue, bro. You're sticking long dicks out to my tia. It's none of my business. And that's when I figured, you know what? Hey, whatever's happened. So I'm like, hey, what's up with Prince? Does, does he know exactly what's going on? He knows, but he don't like it. That's why he's been leaving every day. But you know what? I'm going to live my own life. This is my house, my pussy, and my life. I'm like, yeah, I, I like how you slid that one in there real quick. You know, I've never been so happy in my life. Babe, give me a glass of lemonade, right? So he's over there fucking doing his thing. And I'm just like, hey, I take my liquor. So I'm like, hey, I tell him I can't buy. If he comes back, I'm out. Immediately, I'm calling this motherfucker. Whopping. Hey, bro, what happened? He's like, don't even say it, fool. Don't even say it. This is north of mine, right? I'm like, hey, your mama's over there getting fucking ravaged, bro. Ravishing Rick Rootstock by the junkyard dog. He goes, I know. I know, fool. Hey, that for fucking scandalous, eh? Hey, he went over there talking about one time, hey, hey, fuck, I got kicked out. I have nowhere to stay. That motherfucker was in the bone of the shit out of my head. Fuck, fool, what did I do? What did I do? I was like, oh, bro, that ain't cool. Did you, like, did you green light it or, or, no, fool, red light, red light. Fucking hell no, fool. I don't even like that about anymore, man. They're, they're kicking me out, right? I'm like, hey. Come to my pad, bro. We have to fucking decipher some shit what we're going to do here. This is fucking like the end of... The, this is like the eclipses that has just happened, right? We got to figure out if we got to stock some shit up. This is a brother taking shit over. I don't know about you, but in Mexican families, we ain't allowing that shit to happen. Hey, with all these tight pants and funny haircuts that motherfuckers are rocking now, they're very urbanly influenced. And we're not going to let this dude urbanly influence our tia. He's already gave her about 15 and a half inches of influence, right? So we're... We got to fucking defuse this situation. So, my primo swings by with fat bitch, right? And one of their homies, who's active as fuck, and he tries to fucking lean up against the car and me and mug me. And I'm like, bro, don't get, don't get your whole ear pulled off, bro. You're going to look like my cousin with half an ear. You, between you, my cousin, and Holly, Holyfield, I don't know who lost more, right? Don't do it. And so, the vato's all over there, right? But he's, he knows what's up. He's a cool dude. So, anyways, my primo's like, hey, fool. Nah, that fool fucking snuck in, right? He said, you know what this fool told me? I said, did you take flight? No, well, not yet, but I'm down. If we all go there and jump them, I'm down, right? I said, no, 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 you got to handle it. That's your mom. I, I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm willing to do what I have to do. What happened? He's like, I don't know, little by little. My mom just started dressing skimpier, skimpier. I said, she always is like that. No, for almost one time, I swear to God, but she just hung out. It was just right there in the lawn chair next to her. It was fucking crazy, right? I'm like, damn, fool, like that. He said, this motherfucker told me straight up, look, me and your mom's going to be together, okay? 
Me and you going to go out and have a good time. Don't trip. I'm going to hook you up with a gang of black chicks. You're going to be good, right? But it's either going to be me and your mom or it's going to be you and nothing, right? And I said, and you let him tell you like that? This He said, this motherfucker told me straight out. So look, I'm going to go up in there and have your mom a few more times and I'm going to come out and we're going to bounce. And I said, oh, it's a wrap, bro. He punked you. You done got punked by the brother, right? You know what I mean? na we mojana neje, masaku asante ki tu. You got Swahili around that motherfucker, bro. You let this brother move in. This motherfucker, why, no wonder he was bringing all kinds of food and groceries and shit. He had his eyes on your old lady. And I'm telling you right now, bro. And he looks at his old lady. What? She said, I didn't fuck him yet. I mean, what? Right? I mean, I didn't fuck him. Right? So now I'm like, oh, it's getting bad. So I'm not going to lie. We went over there and proceeded to get our asses whooped by Melvin. <laughs> True stories. If I'm going to tell him, I got to tell him right. We went over there. My cousin confronted him. My tia went off. But then when she realized that he was beating the shit out of her son, it like in mid stride she switched up. I'm going to grab a sartén. She was trying to hit him in the head. This black dude was choking me with fucking one hand, beating the shit out of my cousin with the other. Needless to say, Melvin won that day, um, but we fought the good fight. Black power, right? And that was it. Um, my cousin fucking chased him down the street with the cuete that fucking, it was crazy, right? That one never came back. I guess they had beef, but... You know, it was just never, it was kind of just me mugging when they seen each other. Again, my cousin can't really go nowhere unless a homie picks him up or he's on his bike. But from according to my cousin, he never rode his bike past his house um, for precautionary reasons, you know, for health reasons. So look, dude jams, I'm all choked out and grasping for air. And I'm telling my cousin, bro, I'm tired of getting involved in your conflict. Every time you have something going on, I have to back your play, bro. This ain't right. And my cousin's like, well, fuck you then. So for about six months, me and my primo did not talk. I was disappointed in my tia because she was getting uh, curb served, you know what I'm saying, by one of the fucking guys from Next. He was getting a little too close. Um, I was highly disappointed in fucking uh, Sheila because all Sheila cared to do, she didn't even help us that day. She was too busy fucking eating the fucking chicken that black dude made. And then I was very disappointed in Melvin because that bought the fish and he was showing me how to hook up lures. So I was fucked the whole way around, right? I was just like, I ain't dealing with these people no more. Let me cancel them. Cancel Christmas. Plus it was holiday season. And I didn't want to buy him shit. So I just, I'm going to stay away. So trip out. My primo, and this, I'm, what I'm about to tell you is about the only time I've ever had to put hands on my primo. We fought one other time. And that was when every fucking, he asked about the dropout shit, bro. We got down. Um, but besides that, right? And I fucking just choked him with this Mongolian. Besides that, this time was going to be devastating for him. See, I've never been a fighter like that. I mean, I had, I could, I could throw down, right? I could do what I have to do to do it. Um, but it was more one punch knockout with me. It's all about power. Okay. So I had met this chick, my second baby mama, right? Wait up. I got four. So it's hard to figure out which one. It was my second baby mama. Rest in peace, man. And, uh, she lived right next to my abuelita in Winton, Winton, California, right? Which is a Sureño stronghold, a Southsider stronghold. It's a gang of Southsiders in Winton. If you know, you know, right? Um, so I've told you situations where fools pulled out guns on me right there with my kids. Just It, it just gets tricky when you're over there. But my abuelita lives there. We're going to be there, right? So my primo's there and he's hanging out at my grandmother's. Him and Sheila have been there for about two weeks trying to take advantage, eat all the food in the house before they go home. And I think it was one of those situations where my tia was like, no, get the fuck out. Take fat bitch, all your rugrats, everything with you. I got a new boyfriend in town. And it's okay. The way we rock, you know, rock the boat. Rock the boat. You know, my tia always adapts to whatever the guy likes. If it's a black guy and he wants to listen to Spice One, my tia's going to be in there. Welcome to the ghetto. Dun, 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 dun. I'm like, yep, you ain't you ain't too far off. This is the ghetto. I've never seen a country house as ghetto as this. So that's how she is. If she's with the white dude, then we're not going to take it. She's on her shit, right? Oh, she's going to take it. So anyways, they're having one of their little beefs or whatever. My prima's all over the place with this shit. But one thing that never wavers is his Norteño style, right? He's always flamed up. I'm telling you, if you're going to do a video about me, make sure you get all flamed up. All right, boom. There you go, primes. So now I'm going to tell the story about when I whipped your ass. So now I'm with this chick, and I'm not going to lie. Everybody's kind of jealous because she's bad. My second baby mama was beautiful, man. My love of my life. She was bad, right? And so we're stunting on everyone. She had a clean-ass truck, man. We'd mob in her truck because at that point, the way that my license worked is I didn't have one. So it didn't work at all. So I mob around with her. Well, my primo get, you know, for a while he was getting a social security check. It was kind of like a disabled check because one thing I haven't told you, and you guys probably wonder why he's so twick one is mine. My cousin was born addicted to heroin. Okay. There you go. My tia, mijo, there was a time in my life when I indulged, right? So 
He was born like that, so he's not all the way correct, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, he's a little uh, he's a little lefty gunplayish, right? He's a little hyper um, and at the same time slow. So it's like a mix of fucking whatever he's going to be that day. So he would get this little check, and every once in a while he'd get the check. The check would go to my grandma's, and that's why he'd go over there to pick it up. And my grandma would only give him a little bit. She wouldn't let his mom take control of it because his mom wouldn't give him shit. So it's always been like that because he lived for years with my grandma before his mom got out of the pen. Oh, we're going to get deep into the conversations. Don't trip. We got a lot of more episodes to get to that, right? So he's over there and he's like, hey, primo. And I pull up. What's up with my chick? And he's looking at her like, twirling his Mongolian whopping, eh? Right? I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, hey, primo, I think I want to buy a couple pounds of some, of some yes, guy. Can you get them off for me? And then whatever extra money we make, I'm trying to flip this money into more money. I'm like, I'm so fucking proud of you, right? I'm so proud because he's really thinking outside of the box instead of just blowing all his money on all the fucking people and the fucking drinking beer. This fool actually wants to do something with it. So I'm like, got you, right? So we cop two peas. He shoots them to me. Um, immediately I jam. Well, I just happen to fall in knee deep into some pussy, which is that new chick for about a week, my old lady, right? And I forget all about the weed. It's just it's just fucking molding in the back back of her trunk of her fucking truck, right? Or the back cap. And my cousin's calling me, hey, fool, you're burning me. You burn me. And I'm like, fool, I got it. Don't, don't trip, bro. I'll get it off to a homie. It's, it's nothing. I just, fool, right now I'm trying to live. Can I live? And I'm was like, no, you burn me. So he's talking shit. And he had never really talked shit like this to me. I let him get away with this little non-active act this shit because it, it is what it is. I know he don't mean harm, right? And I mean, I'll, I'll fucking beat him up, right? So I'm like, he's like, no, fuck that, you fucking D.O. You're fucking trying to burn me, right? I'm going to get the homies to jump. What'd you say? Wap it, right? And I said, okay. Oh, you want to play with me? Sounds good. I'm mad, right? So I tell the chick, have you ever seen the movie Baby Boy? She said, yeah, yeah, I seen that. I said, remember when he fucking does the one hitter quitter? Trip out. Watch my cousin right now. So as we pull up to my grandmother's house, her family lives right next door. So we're going to, she has a pad in back of their pad, right? So as we pull up, they're barbecuing in front of my fucking grandma's house and with no permission, right? Because my grandma can't even get out of bed. And there's a whole bunch of fucking my primos and, and my other tia. And, and just right there, my cousin's right there in the front fucking going to Mongolian thinking he's super just on bullshit like this. Just waiting because I told him I'm on my way. That fool's literally waiting for me. <laughs> ah, man. Right? I got off the car, threw his two fucking pounds right at him. Take your shit. A full fucking Sheila, she bends over to try to pick him up. Big ol' ass damn near falls over, right? And my primo's like, dude, hey, whopping, man. Don't try it up. Boom! That's whopping, homie, right? Ooh! That fool jumps up, tries to do the Mr. Miyagi, the crane, right? My other thing, I get out of here. You're a degenerate. I'm like, where'd you learn that word? From this fucking puto. Get out of here, right? I'm like, oh, my whole family didn't like me for a few months, right? Um, then they realized half of them couldn't pay their rent and they needed to borrow money. Then they liked me again. And that's just how it be, man. Um, that side of my family is a little tricky. It gets a little tricky. They love me. They hate me. I guess it's a game for fools. Anyways, man, that's the episode of the day. We had to get beat up by the black guy. We tried. We tried. I seen him later on in life, though. I ain't even going to lie, man. I seen him at a foster freeze in that water one time getting a big old cone, right? I seen that brother. He was like, hey, ASA, I know you. And I said, yeah, what's up? He said, man, I done moved out of there, man. Every time your cousin went by, I thought that little motherfucker was going to throw a grenade or something. How's your Thea doing? Right? I said, hey, man, <laughs> it's all good, bro. I'll tell you how my fucking neck's doing. Right? Um, and that was that. Anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys are ready for part nine because we're going to get really into the intricacies and the details of what happened when my Thea did time and my cousin gets locked up behind trying to take her some shit. Are you guys ready? You know how it goes, man. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive, struggle, struggle, strive for what I honestly and truly believe in. And that's the betterment of everybody, man. I tell these stories not to shine a bad light on my primes. And I love you because I don't do that like that. Um, but the shit's funny, man. So why not? This is the gun. Bang, bang. Dun, 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 dun. It's Super Norteño.